humans about to escape. Gah. Get your stinking paws off me, you damn dirty apes! Gah. He can talk. 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 Even better, I can sing. <gasps> oh my! Help me, Doctor Zayas. Oh. Doctor Zayas. Doctor Zayas. Doctor Zayas. Doctor Zayas. Doctor Zayas. Doctor Zayas. Oh, Doctor Zayas. Doctor Zayas. Doctor Zayas. What's wrong with me? I think you're crazy. Want a second opinion? I'd like to. You, Doctor. Oh, okay. But you're so darn ugly. <gasps> Doctor Zayas, Doctor Zayas. Come on, Doctor. Doctor Zayas, Doctor Zayas. Drink the forbidden stuff. Doctor Zayas, Doctor Zayas. Taylor. Oh, Doctor Zayas. Doctor Zayas, Doctor Zayas. It's heresy. Doctor Zayas, Doctor Zayas. Doctor Zayas, Doctor Zayas. Hello everyone, Mr. Tardis11 here. And welcome to my re-review of Planet of the Apes. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, um, I did review these movies uh, quite a while back. But, to be honest, the reviews were crap. So, <laughs> I'm redoing them. And also, The Watcher has done his, so I thought it would be nice to redo mine. Because, yeah, the quality of my previous one, the reviews of these films were rubbish. So... <laughs> Yeah, I'm going to admit that. Um, so yeah, and I can do sketches, which is cool. Um, so, Planet of the Apes, the 1968 original film. So, um, the plot is that there are these three astronauts that um, end up going back in, well, forward in time. I think it's forward in time. Yeah, I go forward in time. Uh, by about 2,000 years, and um, to, f to um, yeah, find that they have sort of crash landed. They, basically, they crash land 2,000 years into the future, and um, to find this ape society has is is ruling. And um, two of the astronauts die, and the main character who we focus on is Taylor, played by Charlton Heston, and he gets captured and tortured by the apes, and. Um, he has to also prove to the apes that man is of equal intelligence and ethnicity as well. And um, to basically, you know, it, it goes on from there. There's a load of political issues with regards to the apes and the man, you know. And, um, yeah, <laughs> you know, and ta Taylor tries to escape the ape settlement with the help of um, Cornelius and Zira, um, who are these two apes, they're, they're, they're this couple, they're these two scientists, and they, they are fighting on Taylor's side. They, they've they seen him, he, and he, he speaks to them, and, you know, they, 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 you know, they stand up against uh, Dr. Zayas, Dr. Zayas, Dr. Zayas, uh, Dr. Zayas, um, who is, like, the head of the science division? Yeah, um, and he basically is knocking against them, uh, he, he doesn't believe that there is sufficient evidence to prove that Taylor is, you know, worthy of, of, of existence, I suppose, you know, he can't quite falter, he, he basically boils it down to a genetic experiment, but, um, Cornelius and Zero are, are fighting to prove that Taylor is a unique, you know, specimen, and, you know, it becomes a big chase from then on, um, so, yeah, um, that was a pretty all over the place synopsis of the plot, but you kind of get the gist of it. Um, Planet of the Apes. Now, this film came out a long time ago. It came out like 45 years ago. Uh, no, no, 47 years ago now. Oh, blimey. It's nearly 50 years old. Um, <laughs> yeah, 
Um, this film is directed by Franklin J. Schaffner and stars Charlton Heston, Kim Hunter, Maurice Evans, Roddy McDowell, um, <clears throat> and Linda Harrison. And this film is just an absolute masterpiece. For me, it is one of the best sci-fi science fiction films I have ever seen. I mean, you know, I'm just adjusting my camera. Look. Not only, you know, because of, you know, well, it's, you know, it's a science fiction film, but there's there's so much richness to it. I mean, the political intrigue is something that I really have to state here. Um, the political intrigue political debates that happen in this film between Taylor, um, Taylor Cornelius Zera, um, going against Dr. Zaius and the apes, um, it's just such a well-crafted, um, piece of drama, and it does make you question, you know, these kind of issues in our society today, about acceptance and, you know, finding a place in society. Um, obviously this is more on an extreme scale, you know, this is about kind of life and death, and, you know, it's quite intense in that respect, and I, hang on, sorry about that, I was interrupted, um, so what was I, yes, uh, political intrigue is very strong here, I think just as a, as a drama, as a dramatic piece, it works so well, it's not, it, it doesn't involve, it's not a film that really has spectacle, I mean, there is a there are action sequences, there are action scenes at the end, and as the movie goes on, there's a few debacles like fisticuffs here and there, but um, it's very set on political drama, and that is the, the why this movie is successful as it is, you know, the great craft of this movie lies within the drama the script, and just the storytelling, I think, is superb I mean, the way they crafted this film the way, we're, we're, we're sort of told the story from Taylor's perspective um Taylor, played by John Heston, uh, you know, <laughs> he's quite relatable in a sense, I mean, because we've all, we've all tried to fight for acceptance at one, at one point, one way or another, uh, metaphorically speaking, of course, I mean, not to the extreme levels of this, I mean, this is, um, basically depicting the apes as, like, this very sophisticated, intelligent society, but yet, Taylor proves that there is a that, that is corrupted, the, the society is corrupted, and through Dr. Zaius, who is basically feeding the apes all of this false lies, you know, this they, they, they worship Caesar as their leader, and you know and, you know, nobody quite understands why why Taylor, why Taylor is, you know, why he is human, I mean, you know and when he speaks, that scene, when he says get your paws off me, you damn dirty apes that, a classic scene of cinema and really proves, you know, you know, it really just goes, proves how far that Dr. Zaius will go to prove how right he is. He's a character who loves to be, you know, correct. He likes to be right about everything, really, e everything and anything. Um, and um, <coughs> Taylor is trying to prove that, you know, man is almost, you know, man kind of came after the apes, you know, he's trying to prove, the, you know, essentially e evolution to him, and, um, you know, that's, uh, it's quite a big thing to deal with, I mean, it's, it's not a film for kids, this film is not a film for young kids, uh, this target audience is very much people who understand kind of political stuff, I mean, people who like sci-fi, I mean, I'm not going to lie, I, I'm not really big on politics, I don't really have much of an interest in it, partly because I don't really understand all of it, but for this film I kind of get it, I mean it's it's kind of dealing with a lot of those social issues and um, on that extreme level and that makes it really intriguing and powerful. Um, there are some really dramatic scenes in this film, um, I'll get on to those later, um, and you'll know which one I'm talking about, um, yeah, but the characters. Uh, the characters are great. I think they're all really good. Um, first of all, Taylor, played by Charlton Heston, who's the main character. He's he's really good. I really like him in this film, and he's um, a great protagonist. He's likable. He's charming. He's he's quite courageous. He, he you know he, he's never afraid to stick up for himself. Um, and I like that that Charlton Heston gives him a certain spunk, you know. And, and you know, God rest his soul, Charlton Heston. He, he's di he's died now, but um, he's definitely. Um, 
he's definitely proven to be a, a worthy protagonist for this film. I like Taylor. He was good. He's, and, you know, I'll talk about him again as well in the next review because he, he, he's in Beneath as well. Um, we have the two main apes who we focus on are Zira and Cornelius, who are this couple. Um, they're very good. I think the chemistry between them is very good. Um, Kim Hunter and Roddy McDowell are fantastic. And one thing I probably should point out right now, the prosthetics on the apes are immaculate. They are excellent. Literally, like, this This is amazing. It still amazes me how great they are. I mean, this film came out in the 60s. 1968 is when this film came out. And the apes' prosthetics, I mean, I would even say it's visually stunning. You know, it's fantastic. I mean, it's great on Blu-ray as well. So if you have a Blu-ray, do pick up the set. Uh, or at least this film, anyway, on the Planet of the Apes. Um, it's it's fantastic to watch. You can actually see the emotions. You can actually see real emotions being displayed here. I mean, this is way before motion capture was ever invented and discovered by Andy Serkis. I mean, who's in the reboots. I'll talk about that a lot more. Um, I'll compare the both of them when I've reviewed the Rise and Dawn. Um, yeah, I mean, there's a great sense of... Um, there's a great sense of realism with the prosthetics, which is what I love. And, you know, even with, like, the other characters, like the antagonist, Dr. Zaius, I mean, um, he's good as well. Maurice Evans plays him very well. And you can tell he is a strict believer in, you know, the morals of ape. You know, he, he, he believes firmly and foremost that apes come first. Apes come first. That is pretty much his tagline, you know, apes come first, he doesn't believe in anything else, he will strive to prove that apes are the most dominant species and they are the most powerful species, and that, you know, in the evolutionary chain, they are numero uno <laughs> if that makes sense um, but yeah, other characters, um, we have Linda Harrison who plays Nova, she is a mute character, she cannot talk at all um, I mean, she's very easy on the eyes though, I will say that I, I think Linda Harrison's pretty attractive here. She's got lovely blonde, not blonde hair, lovely brown hair, and she's very. <laughs> Sorry about that, my phone rang. Um, yeah, I love the music as well. The, the, the soundtrack um, for the movie was composed by Jerry Goldsmith, and he did a superb job. I mean, it's not. It's not a hugely ambitious soundtrack. I mean, I mean, it was made in the 60s. Uh, it's a very simple score, but I think it works very effectively for the the dramatic moments, the intense moments. There's there's a great section um, in near the beginning of the film where the, the other two astronauts die, um, and uh, there's like a battle scene that they're like there's like a shootout in the field, like a cornfield, and Taylor kind of is weaving his way through it, um, and it's I just when you first see the apes. I mean, the only real complaint I have with the film is that it takes its time. I mean, that's not a problem though. It, well, it's not a major problem. Um, the first act of the film, like the first thirty minutes, it does go on a bit. I mean, um, like, see, like just, it focuses on Taylor and the other two uh, astronauts whose names I I, and I I know one's called Landon, but I. Don't know what the other one's called. Um, so Taylor Landon and the other guy are trudging through the, the um, well, well, yeah, the, the wasteland. Uh, <laughs> I mean, whilst it's great and it's you know showing you some of that gorgeous scenery, it is shot beautifully. This movie is shot beautifully. There's a lot of zoom in and out shots though. That's the only thing I'm not really a fan of is the the shots that kind of zoom in and out. Like you know, sometimes it gets a bit distracting. It feels like um, they didn't edit it completely you know, they didn't cut it together finally um, not that it is edited badly, it is edited great, but yeah it would have been nice to have, maybe to have a bit of a sharper edit, but it's it was the 60s so I'm going to let it pass um, I, I just, I think the film has a great pace too I mean, I was yeah, the first 30 minutes are a bit slow but um, once you get past that, I mean it's necessary, but it is a little bit slow, once you get past that, it's quite it's really quite entertaining, um, and you really, I mean, the sets and production design are just gorgeous to look at, I mean, it is fantastic to look at, 
the budget was well spent here. I think this won like two Oscars. I think it was for like soundtrack and something else. I think and for makeup, hair and makeup, um, obviously for the prosthetics, which were fantastic. Before the days of CGI, this is prosthetics at its glory. In Planet of the Apes, it is at its best. Um, and I'm just so impressed by it every time I watch it. And of course, I have to talk about the end of the film. And, you know, full spoilers for these reviews. Full spoilers. Um, uh, the very end of the film when they reveal that the planet is Earth. Basically, the entire time we've been on Earth. So, Taylor's, and, you know, Taylor does that famous moment when he's like, You maniacs! You burn it up! Damn you! Damn you all to hell! That is a really powerful moment, and the ending is just great. The one thing I don't really get is why, why on the DVD cover did they put that as as the as the front cover, like the end of the film? They just gave it away completely. My mum pointed it out to me when I was younger. Like they just completely give away the the end of the film. Like they have the Statue of Liberty at the end on the DVD case, and take Taylor on the on the on the beach on his knees. They've just given the whole ending away. It's uh, just terrible. But, I mean, that aside, at the time, it was one of the greatest movie twists of all time. Um, along with Star Wars, with, you know, I Am Your Father, <laughs> of course. Um, but, yeah, I don't really have much else to say about Planet of the Apes. I think the characters are really well written. The, the dramatic moments hit very well. Um, the pace is consistent enough. The editing is good, but it could be sharper. The actors are great. Um, I like the music. The music's great. The political drama is very strong here. And, um, yeah, Dr. Zaius is a good antagonist. Um, and the very end of the film as well, when they're on the beach, is quite a great moment. Um, also, when they find the doll. Uh, and yet Dr. Zaius still doesn't believe T Taylor's uh, theory, you know, with... with Taylor's truth. He's telling the truth. Uh, um, yeah, I mean, and the film ends on an open note, so yeah, it's to be continued. Um, and it, it's a brilliant, brilliant film. It is a masterpiece. It is a great start to what could have been a, an amazing film series had the next few films not been in quality. Um, but yeah, I mean, overall, I'm going to give this an easy 10 out of 10. <laughs> I think it's a fantastic, fantastic movie. And it's one of my favourite science fiction films. I love it so much. It is, it's just fantastic. And if you haven't seen it, why are you watching this? Because I've spoiled it. But, um, yeah, if, if you know, or if you know of anyone who hasn't seen it, um, do recommend it to them because it is fantastic. It gets you thinking as well um, about kind of politics. I mean, it, I mean, I'm not really big on politics, as I've said, but it does, it does kind of make me think a little bit more about it, more than I used to anyway. And it looks great, it's visually stunning, so, you know, there's not much to dislike. The only thing I would say is that it is a bit slow in the start. Yeah, and they don't really spend time developing the other two astronauts, but it's a minor discrepancy. I can live with it. Um, so, yeah, that's pretty much all I've got to say about Planet of the Apes. Um, what do you think? Do you agree? Do you disagree? Put your comments down below and let me know. Uh, tune in next time when I review Beneath the Planet of the Apes, which is the second film in the in the series. Um, I don't know when that's going to be coming up. Uh, tomorrow I should have my review up of Primeval Series 4, Episode 1. So, uh, yeah, Series 4 will be starting tomorrow. So, yeah, um, until then, adieu, folks, and I'm Mr. Charles 11, and see ya.